Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the first live stream in our four part Giving 101 conversation series. I'm Matthew Tange, the VP of Philanthropy and Impact at Giving Compass. And joining me today is Sada Lumelin, Executive Director of Philanthropy Together. Welcome, Sada. Thank you, Afi. Thank you so much for having me. As many of you know, Giving Tuesday is coming up on December 1st. It's a huge day for generosity around the world. Our goal with this series is to equip donors with the right tools and knowledge to give with impact, both on Giving Tuesday and beyond. Today, we're discussing how we can turn one-time donations into lasting relationships with nonprofits in our communities, how that translates into systemic change and racial justice, and how giving circles are really making all this happen. Sada, before we jump into the questions, please do share a bit about yourself and philanthropy together. Thank you, Afi. Well, a little bit about myself. Um, I was born in Mexico City. I moved to the US 24 years ago, and I have been living in different parts of the country, but I, I call the Bay Area, uh, the San Francisco Bay Area home. Um, I have three uh, grown children uh, that are the three of them living with me since COVID started. Uh, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, I love it. Maybe they are, don't, are not loving it that anymore, <laughs> but you know, that happens. Um, I just heard some laughs actually about that, about that comment. And I have been in philanthropy for the last, um, you know, a little bit over a decade. Uh, I started my career in, in the for-profit world, but, but started my career in philanthropy about a decade ago with the Latino Community Foundation it based in San Francisco, uh, where I helped create the Latino Given Circle Network, a network of 22 given circles, which is now the largest Latino donor network in the country. Um, after that, I started, uh, I worked for a little bit at Opportunity Fund, the largest nonprofit micro lending in the, in the country. But at the same time, about three years ago, uh, we started creating this beautiful project that now is Philanthropy Together. Philanthropy Together is an, a five-year national, well, actually, we're not national anymore, global initiative to support the collective giving uh, movement. And our mission is to democratize and diversify philanthropy through the power of giving circles. Wonderful. Okay, so I think the first question for the audience um, to get a little bit more grounded is tell us a little about giving circles and the growth we're seeing in collective giving globally. Thank you. So, you know, one of my favorite uh, definitions of a giving circle is, uh, is this, you know, a giving circle takes your mind, your talents and financial abilities seriously and makes giving a collaborative social experience. You know, giving circles create caring, generous communities of people who give intentionally, thoughtfully, and strategically together. Simply put, you know, giving circles are where individuals come together, they discuss their values or issues in their community, and decide together where to make a collective gift. Um, giving circles are not new, and certainly they're not American. You know, you may have heard of a susu, which they're commonly referred in the Caribbean cultures, or a tanda in Mexico. So, you know, this movement of collective giving um, in the U.S. Be began in the early 80s. And over the last 20 years, you know, researchers estimate that there are more than 1,600 giving circles. Uh, half of them exist in networks, and I will talk about networks a little bit later, and half of them are independent. And as we know from our work this past year is that more and more exist and are starting all over the world. And as the movement continues to grow, the landscape of philanthropy is shifting due to collective giving. Donors are a lot more diverse than ever before. Um, and actually, you know, I'm just going to put the plug here, but we just launched a new website, which lives on whatisthegivingcircle.com, mm -hmm. and which is extremely simple and goes even deeper and shows examples of giving circles and illustrates how you can maximize your giving by being part of a giving circle. Awesome. Thank you for the plug. I'm super excited about sharing more resources. Um, so our next question, uh, we know that effective giving requires building trust and relationships. Please tell us how giving circles do this and go beyond the one-time donation to real long-term change. Well, you know, giving circles are kind of the outsiders of traditional philanthropy because we are everyday givers, right? You know, traditionally the dollars trickle down from very wealthy donors into organizations 
And oftentimes there is like a disconnect between donors and, and, and nonprofits. Like Giving Circles shatter completely this system and enable you know, everyday people to serve their communities directly and sometimes fill in those funding gaps, right? That, that traditional philanthropy are not going to fund. So you don't have to be a billionaire or a millionaire to make an impact. You know, this is a bottom up giving approach versus the top down model that we're used to seeing. And, you know, giving circles can give to artists or activists of projects or small grassroots organizations, wherever they identify the need they can address it directly and eliminate these barriers that may exist with general traditional funding. Um, you know, because most given circles represent the communities they serve. They take the time to discuss the issues collectively. They are, very, they are you know, a lot of the times better informed of, of community needs. And Another thing is that giving circles are extremely social in nature. So inherently giving circles build civic ties and create community connections. Um, like for example, you know, my, my giving circle is the Peninsula Latina giving circle. We, um, we supported a grassroots, uh, grassroots organization in the Pescadero area in the coast um, with the the starting of uh, uh, the funding of a of a childcare center, but from the design of the center, getting the licenses, getting the furniture, so we feel like we are kind of the godmothers of that child uh, childcare center. That's awesome. I want to go back to something you said about. Um... Giving circles are typically in the communities people live in. I think one of the biggest challenges um, in philanthropy is proximity, um, the proximity of donors and lived experience to understand. Um, I, I've always said like, you can't solve problems you have not lived. Like if you don't understand it, you can't create solutions. And so there's just a beauty um, to communities serving themselves and supporting themselves with what they have, um, which I think creates much more enduring um, solutions than we're, we see through typical philanthropy because literally we have hundreds of years of throwing millions and millions of dollars at communities without seeing real solutions because it's top down and i just deeply ex appreciate the lived experience like reality of giving circles and how that really creates long-term impact totally you know 84 percent for the last re research 84 percent of giving circles give locally mm -hmm. so people are really close to that and also you know that opens up the the relationship beyond the dollars, right? Because okay. giving circles not only give, you know, a financial gift, but they give their talent, their time, their testimony. So we have seen, you know, how giving circle members that, uh, you know, they, they join a giving circle as the first door into philanthropy. Mm -hmm. uh, they get so engaged with their nonprofit, the, the nonprofits that they support that they become board members of, or of those nonprofits. They volunteer, you know, their Saturday to help them build a database. They are giving out their skills. They become ambassadors and real advocates for those organizations. And something also that it's uh, extremely, you know, heartwarming too, is that um, some uh, given some nonprofit leaders that have received funds from giving circles, they love this model so much that they become members of the given circle uh, of the given circle too. So it's yeah. like a we go full circle. I'm laughing because part of me is like it's the ultimate pyramid scheme of like how you pull more and more people together. But you what I, I, mean? It, I mean like it's 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 like the pyramid for justice. Um what I do want to think about is or talk about is just um it's a form of organizing. Right, it's, it's that grassroots community building and it's been so important um, as we saw with, with the election recently, um, building power in communities, like giving circles do that and they create solutions within communities and then they continue with those lasting relationships for long-term change, which is just a phenomenal prospect. But I, I am excited that I now think about it as like the ultimate pyramid scheme. That is something you know, I it's, now that you're saying that, it's very funny because in my giving circle, I was trying to get, you know, this, uh, acquaintance of mine that we were in the same, our kids were in the same soccer team together, right? So I was telling her about the Giving Circle, you know, she lived nearby, she was, she's Latina. I'm like, she should be part of the Giving Circle. And she always said like, 
yeah, you know, let me think about it. Let me think about it. And one day she calls me and she says, I am ready to join your giving circle. And I said, this is great, but you know, why the change? What happened? Yeah. And she said, oh, because I sat down with uh, Marisa, another member, and she explained, like, she took the time to explain really what you guys do, because at some point I thought it was kind of like a pyramid, and I didn't want to be <laughs> part of that. And I'm like, no, it's not a pyramid. It, this is, you know, this is really community impact. So, um, yeah, totally. That is why we put together this website, what is circle.com because it's 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 very clear. It explains very clear what it is. Yeah. I love that she was like, I thought it was a hustle. <laughs> I, know. I know, totally. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to our next question because we're running through our time kind of quickly. So can you share some examples, uh, specific examples of how you've seen giving circles work to create more equitable communities and really to take apart broken systems that weren't working? Um, I loved your example of building a child childcare system. There's all kinds of information about childcare deserts, um, culturally appropriate and supportive and responsive, like caregiving and all those things. But um, can you give us another example of where you've seen it? Sure. So, you know, there are giving circles all over the world who are like intentionally working to further their community, right? Like what we have seen, and especially, you know, this year is that a lot of these broken systems and inequities are brought to light even more, right? Uh, the pandemic, you know, uh, racial equity reckoning, etc. So giving circles have responded in major way. And a couple of examples, there's a, a giving circle in Denver, Colorado, uh, the Sisterhood of Philanthropists impacted, Impacting Needs, or SPIN for short. Yeah. And their donors typically donate at least a dollar a day, so $365 a year. Okay. And in March, they started a community microgrant fund. And within the first three months, they provided more than 700 families and 10 Black-owned businesses with financial support. That's so nice. this is, you know, like moving very quickly, being very nimble, but attacking, you know, the, the, the root cause. Um, another example, you know, the Women's Giving Circle of Howard County has been around since 2002, and it's based in Maryland. And they primarily, uh, you know, they primarily focus on funding projects for the healthy development of, of girls and life skills of women. So they, you know, from the get-go, you know, because language is so important. They call the organizations that they're funding their partners, right? Yeah. It's, they're not their grantees, they're their partners. So they're showing the breaking power dynamics that Giving Circles provide. Uh, their emergency response network responded like to several requests this year, like ranging from helping immigrants who, who were uh, unable to receive unemployment, yeah. to providing food and diapers to a number of community centers. So again, you know, really quickly uh, moving. Um, another example, and this one I love, is the Equitable Giving Circle. Uh, they just launched in January to address the economics in inequities within BIPOC communities in Portland. Yeah. And they initially, initially launched with the intention to support BIPOC entrepreneurs. But mm -hmm. they shifted the focus with the onset of COVID-19 and in eight weeks, they partner with uh, BIPOC owned farms in the Portland area and raise $600,000 to provide free weekly health focused meal boxes to 400 families. That's so, you know, no. this shows how adaptive and responsive giving circles can be uh, to their needs of the community. That's the beauty of this. There is no bureaucracy, right? You can yeah. switch, even if, even if a giving circle has, um, a set funding priority, you can always pick up the phone and say, hey, gals, let's go on, on Zoom. And, you know, we need to do a, an extraordinary round of grants, uh, a flash round of grants right now to support, you know, voter education, uh, to help with uh, communities that are uh, affected by COVID or whatever is happening, right? Or maybe, you know, an emergency in your local community. So the beauty I, of this. I, I, it's a phenomenal prospect. Um, like you're revolutionizing a very slow to change uh, field and sector. Um, you mentioned bureaucracy. I think the politics, um, the long-term relationships that die overnight, like you're completely changing 
um, the power dynamics that you said, which is just, uh, I've worked in a lot of philanthropic places and I've been an executive director for nonprofit and the hustle of, of pulling resources for things that are necessary, um, is such an administrative burden. And this is something that literally like removes that from, from the, I would say it removes the burden on the actual nonprofit because it, you're only giving them what they need and when they need totally. it, which is amazing. Um, so totally. that's, that's phenomenal. Totally. And you need, you create like a real, a real relationship. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, uh, donors are not here saying, oh, I am the donor. I know what you need, um, yeah. a nonprofit leader. No, it's like, let, let me be the instrument to get the funding that you need. You that are closer to the problem and you are who are part of the community, tell me how can I support you? So I think that's the most important thing that, you know, giving circles are, you know, can provide. Yeah, I am. Um, I think really uh, broadly about how do we take these lessons and all the beautiful things that you all are learning so quickly um, from giving circles and from your network and share that with traditional philanthropists. Like, I think there's been a reckoning with COVID and everything else. Like we need to re, we need to reflect upon what is and isn't working and why these disparities are exacerbated like they are and why we've been throwing money at things. Um, I've always, I, like, I think philanthropy is based in like a, there's an evangelical Christian charity reality of like, I'm doing good to make me feel better about the things that I've done that are bad. And I think that there's something that we can shift um, to, we're given to solve problems, not just to put a bandaid on it, um, that what you guys are doing, we can totally um, be sharing with the broader field of philanthropy, like as they sit in this point of reckoning and reflection, that's just phenomenal to think about. Totally. Totally. And, you know, to that point, we have seen, you know, some uh, institutions coming and asking, you know, how can we partner with Giving Circles, right? Yeah. Uh, how can uh, how can we learn those, you know, that dy dynamism of Giving Circles and, you know, start making changes um, here in the, you know, in the big philanthropy that's, landscape. That's I'm glad that they are actually being proactive and doing outreach. I think when you have endowments and you don't have to change, there isn't a lot of um, incentive to learn and grow. Um, and it's just, it's super exciting that you all are doing that. Um, and I think the plug for Giving Compass is to think about how we can continue to help you share those, those stories and those learnings, at least with our individual donor community. Okay, so let's get to the good stuff. Um, tell us how, do what can donors do to join a giving circle? How do they get involved? How do they get started? Oh, you know, of course, reach to my team at Philanthropy Together. We can, you know, we can connect you with a giving circle network. Um, like, you know, there are more than dozen affinity-based networks that can help you find the right giving circle. Like, for example, you know, there's a big network of women, uh, all female giving circles, which is Philanos. Uh, there's also the Community Investment Network, which is a network of Black and people of color giving circles. Um, Amplifier, which is a network of giving circles based on Jewish values. You know, the Latino giving circle network for Latinx communities. You know, there are many, many networks. The Jewish Teen Funders Network that works with teenagers. So, you know, many networks, right? Like. There's also, you know, um, a platform, grapevine.org, uh, which is a platform for giving circles. And, and on their homepage, they have a list of giving circles across the, the, the US. We're actually working with them to build a very robust directory of all the giving circles in the country. Nice. And people will be able to just like filter it by zip code or issue area or, you know, type of population. Uh, that you want to be a part of or, you know, to support, um, that will be ready uh, the first quarter of 2021. But right. then, of course, you know, if you don't find the right fit for you, you can always start your giving circle. And it's extremely easy and rewarding to start your own giving circle. So at Philanthropy Together, we have a five-week uh, virtual leadership training program called Launchpad. Uh, to provide community leaders with all the tools and resources they need to start the Giving Circle. Actually, we just uh, ended our fall cohort this Tuesday. We have a, a cohort in the summer, uh, a cohort right now in the fall. We will be having another cohort uh, at the beginning of the new year. Um, but we covered everything from how to define your membership, how to set your group's values, how you handle donations, um, 
so right now, you know, with these two cohorts, we have more than a hundred people that are starting giving circles. And, you know, uh, that's why uh, I was laughing that we're not a national initiative anymore and we're global because in Launchpad, we have had people from Germany, from Mexico, Brazil, China, uh, Ukraine joining the program and starting their giving circles in other countries. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not only the five weeks, but after that, they get to be part of this um, community forum that we have. So they get to interact not only with each other in the cohort and, you know, have a lot of peer learning, but also to in their interact with seasoned giving circle leaders from, you know, giving circles that have been in existence for years, because we, mm -hmm. we have this, you know, uh, community forum where we have our launch pad, but also our communities of practice with existing, uh, existing given circles. Wonderful. So then I think the next question is, um, what else do donors need to know? Well, you know, um, as we are, you know, getting to the, the, the year end, you know, people are craving connection, right? They want to create to make a difference. So now it's the perfect time to start a given circle. You know, a lot of people were kind of thinking like, my God, we cannot see each other in, in person and, you know, giving circles, a lot of the power of giving circles is this human connection, this, you know, feel of family, of being together. Um, but, you know, what we saw this year, okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I love um, the cameo, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what we saw this year, my God, is that um, actually being in the virtual world, uh, just, you know, broke all the geographical barriers, right? There is no frontiers. So mm -hmm. it's the time maybe if you were thinking of starting a given circle with your college friends, but everybody's in a different, you know, uh, city. Well, you can do it. You can do it online. You can have your meetings over Zoom. You can, you know, manage your given circle with Grapevine. So it's, it's the perfect time to do that. You know, on our website, philanthropytogether.org, we have resources to help you get connected. We have a YouTube channel with a lot of uh, different themes, like how do you, you know, uh, about power building, about trust-based philanthropy, about how you uh, manage a, a hundred member given circle, mm -hmm. uh, youth philanthropy, evaluation and impact. So we have a lot of resources. You can always email us at hello at philanthropytogether.org. And uh, something that I forgot to say is that we have also a program called, called Launchpad for Hosts mm -hmm. um, that we are uh, going to have in January. We have right now the applications open for host institutions, for you know community foundations, uh, Jewish federations, philanthropic intermediaries that are you know toying with the idea of hosting given circles, mm -hmm. we will provide those uh, leaders with the tools that they need and best practices on how to, to host given circles in, inside their institutions. Great, and so I do um, would love if you could just talk really briefly, we're running out of time and I'll close this out after this question, um, but about the response um, to the movement for black lives and racial justice, um, you all have been doing an amazing, um, you provided, you were very nimble and agile and created an incredible set of resources and tools. And so if you could just share that with our audience and so they know that it's there, that'd be great. Of course. So um, yes, Afi, as, as you and I were, uh, Afi and I were discussing this before, before going uh, live. But one of the things that we do is to strengthen and to, you know, to, to sustain and give resources for existing given circles. And uh, Right in June, we put together uh, in partnership with the Community Investment Network, a couple of webinars for everyday givers, right? How can we, how can we respond, uh, uh, you know, with, to this racial equity reckoning? How can we better philanthropists? How can we embed racial equity in everything that we do? So we started a community of practice uh, that is a six month uh, long community of practice. We're now kind of in the middle of it, in the last part of it, of how you embed racial equity in the culture of your given circle. 
in the grand in your grand making and also how you grow your impact how do you share power build power and yield power in your community so um you can just uh on our website we have a little form if you want to be part of that we can get you to be part of the community forum and even though we are kind of in the last part of the community of practice you can access there the recordings and the materials there's tons of materials to you know talk with your board how do you diversify your membership how you make sure that you are showing up you know with equity in your community wonderful all right well we're just about out of time so i want to first say thank you again sada like this has been a wonderful we've had an hour though we've been on the webinar for 30 minutes um thank you so much for talking with me today and sharing about your work um, for those of you who want to learn more about Giving Circles, you can visit philanthropytogether.org and access all of those resources that Sada shared with us today. And for more donor resources, please do visit givingcompass.org. And don't forget to sign up for the next three live streams. Um, you, can find in, you can find registration information on our homepage. Um, wishing you all a restorative um, and healthy weekend. Um, and we'll be back for our next live stream next week. Thank you, Afi. Thank you so much. And also, you know, uh, take a look at our magazine on Giving Compass. We have the Collective Giving Magazine. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Afi. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.